today we'll see about those. Okay, we'll see about those and how to add tags to those. What are tags? What do you mean by tags? So in an AutoCAD drawing, when you place doors and windows, you name it as D1, D2, W1, W2. Why do you name it as W1 and W2? For different sizes. Similarly, in Revit also, we add, we call it as tags, we add it as D1, D2. If it is the same door, we name it with the same specification like D1, D1, D1. If it is a different size door, then we'll name it as D1 or D dash or D2 like that. So that's all. Uh, that's why we call it as tags. So can we open the doors in Revit architecture? We can open the single flush door, but we can't open the double flush door. Okay. So next is uh, adding tags. So this is how the tags will look. We can add tags individually for doors as well as windows. Okay. You can add tags for doors as well as windows. Next option is flows. How to add flows? Yesterday I created walls and showed you how to create walls. Similarly, we can create flows and we can sketch the floor and also we can add new material to flows. Yesterday we saw only minimum materials which we applied for wall. Whereas in flows, we can add a lot of materials. This has been added in Revit 2014. So 2014 version onwards. Because during 2016, uh, 20, uh, 13, 2012 version, there was no option called Asset Browser. Asset Browser is an option where new materials are available. But in 2014 version onwards, they have added an option called Asset Browser. Yeah. So next is Components. You have numerous components in Revit architecture like you can add furniture, you can add ceiling lights, you can add uh, say, uh, bathroom components, plumbing components and all those things. You can see the picture, you can add all those components out here and also you can uh, download many components from the website and load into your project. There are two websites from which you can add components or browse components and place it in your project. That one is rivetcity.com and another one is Revit Forum. One is rivetcity.com and another one is Revit Forum. Okay. Because there will be some options, there are some components available in the software, but there will be some components which is not available. For example, there will be a disk, there will be three types of disk in Revit software. But you need an advanced disk or a different shape of disk or a disk which is available in the market today. So in order to get that particular disk or that particular furniture, you have to go to Revit City or RevitForum.com, browse it, download it and then place it over Okay. And next is um, lights. There are two types of lights, three types of lights. One is ceiling lights, that is these lights. Another one is wall type lights. Another one is exterior lights, like lamp, you know, those lights. We can add those lights and we can make, we can make the appearance as if light is glowing or sunlight is glowing. We can have two appearances. One is artificial, another one is natural light. So next is material. This is what I said. Yesterday you wouldn't have seen this uh, particular window. Asset browser. There will be only 5 to 6 uh, particular uh, material which you would have applied for your particular wall. But whereas in this asset browser, you have numerous materials. You have numerous materials by which you can select and add it. It has walls. For roof you have different materials. For floor you have different materials. For glass you have different materials. Tiles. Everything we have got. But one thing is, we should go pick the correct thing and place it. And next one is textures. Textures in the sense tiles. For example, you have tiles. It's one feet by one feet. You need it to be one and a half feet by one and a half feet. You can change the texture of your floors. That is called textures. And then coming to ceilings. What are the two types of ceilings? What are the two types of ceilings we use in construction? Sorry? Two types of ceilings. One is false ceiling, another one is true ceiling. So what is false ceiling? It is uh, of Okay, then what is true ceiling? Uh, okay, the slab, the bottom of the slab is called true ceiling. And this one is called false ceiling. Why do we have false ceiling? 
a very horrendous conducts and uh, ducks. This bias will be running. No? Where is it running? Distance between the between true ceiling and false ceiling. So, what is the name of the distance between a true ceiling and the false ceiling called? Okay, what is the default distance between a true ceiling and a false ceiling? Distance between a true ceiling and a false ceiling. So the normal distance is 50 mm, that is two and a half feet. Whereas we don't provide much distance, uh, and the distance, the name of the distance between a true ceiling and a false ceiling is plenum space. Okay, the distance between a true ceiling and a false ceiling, we uh, the name of the distance between a true ceiling and a false ceiling, we call it as plenum space. Nominal plenum space is 750 mm. Okay. So next is creation of roofs. There are two types of roof, three types of roofs by which we can create in uh, Revit architecture. One is sloped roof, another one is flat roof, and the third one is roof by extrusion. Okay. When you create your sloped roof, you can define your own slope or the slope angle. You can define it on your own. Get into the application. You can create a roof, sir. Domes. Domes? No. So I just revised the first class in 10 15 minutes so that whoever has just come into the lab, it will be easy for them to catch. So once you open this application, this is the GUI, we call it as, uh, every software has a user interface, whereas Revit architect architecture, we call it as GUI, technically, graphical user interface. So this particular PP is to enable you to pass your AC examination, that's sort of a certified user, because once you leave out of this hall, at the end of five days, you'll be teaching your students and we'll be again coming after one month or two months so that to see whether the students have gained the knowledge of this particular FTP and then we'll conduct examination for them to clear their ACU examination. Okay? So see that whatever I said, please make a note of it because only that's going to come for your ACU examination. It is an international certification, Autodesk certified user. Okay? So this is application menu, this is properties, followed by project browser, status bar, view access bar, and this is ribbon panel, and this deals with the internet, so we call it as info center or communication center, and this is navigation bar, and these four points, what are these four points called? Elevations, okay, north, south, east, and west, and this is the drawing space, okay. So first, when you open your project, it's important that the first thing you should do is to create levels. In order to create levels, you should go to one of the flow plans. In order to go for the flow plans, here you have, uh, sorry, it's important to go for the elevations. In order to create levels, you should go to any one of the elevations. So in order to go for the elevations, here you have elevations. So you can go for any one of the elevations. You can see two levels being defaultly created. One is level 1, another one is level 2. And the distance between level 1 and level 2 is 4000 mm. 4000 mm in the sense it is 4 meters. Okay. So in our, if you want to change the name of the level, yes you can change it. If you want to change the distance between level 1 and level 2, yes you can change it. So quickly make a note of uh, this level specification of these levels. One is, if you see this bubble, this uh, circle mark, that is called as level bubble, okay, level bubble, and then the Z mark, Z mark here you call it as elbow, adding elbow, this particular mark is called add elbow, and these are constraints, and you can see some uh, uh, square box here, you just click on the square box, the bubble will be hidden. Okay, if you just click on it, the bubble will be hidden. You can see the bubble has hidden. So now to make sure that the bubble comes again, just click on the box again, bubble will come. 
So just three distance, three to three centimeters. So now, what does my level one and level two represent? They are my floors. It's level one is ground floor, level two is first floor. Elbow, okay, fine. You see here, level one, level two, first floor, second floor, and in between first floor and second floor, we have something called sill level. Sill level. Another one is lintel level. So, level one and level two are identical. Both are identical. Okay, but I want to create a sill level and make sure the client see when the client sees, he should uh, he should make sure that it is sill level. So now I'll create a level here. So there is an infinity level, sir. An infinity level sill level in in the level in the level. So level one floor level, level two roof level. In between level sill level or lintel level. That one differentiate from your level. In the level one to level two. So that's all right. Level point one then. For example, level one then then one point two meter is still level two. Create one meter. Okay. I've created a still level. But all these three levels are having common icon, common line. Okay. But I want to show my still level different. So just click on the still level. Press the Z mark. So in the level, in the level, the difference is there. Identification is different, sir. So path on it, there is no. In the mark, mark on this, na this cell level. Okay. And the identification is there. Elbow is there. Okay. Bubbles. Bubbles icons. So level one and level two has been created. Now to add on more levels, go to. Architecture under level, click level, take pick lines and give an offset. I'll give four meter and then place the level. Just place the cursor on the preceding level. The level is will fall. Okay. This is how you have to create your levels. So the shortcut key for level is double L L L. Okay. So once you're done with your levels, next thing you should do is creation of grids. Creation of grids doesn't have an impact in Revit architecture. Where whereas when you go for Revit structures, we have to deal with grids. Okay. But in the examination point of view, they will ask a few questions with grids. So I'll tell you about grids as well. Grids are similar to uh, levels. Where do you create grids? In elevations or floor plans? Floor plans. So you should create your levels in floor plans. So go to flow plans. Again, you have the four points. Go to grid. Draw a grid here. So now I want to offset this particular grid. So again, go to grid. Takes pick uh, lines. Give an offset. Four meter. And then just place the grid. Seven grids. So my horizontal grids are placed with numericals one, like one, two, three, four. Whereas my vertical grids, I have to, play, I want to place it with alphabets. So in order to do that, again go to grids, create a reference grid, and then change the name. It is six. Change it as A. Click on it. Give A. Now go to architecture and the architecture grid. Under grid, take pick lines and the pick lines give an offset of four meter. Now place your grid. Automatically you see this B. Okay. It will either take it in the numerical order or alphabetical order. A followed by. So other things are same, like the level bubble, Z mark, everything is same. See here, 
elbow, level bubble, gun string, everything is same. So next thing is project units. So what is the shortcut key for project units in uh, AutoCAD? Shortcut key for uh, project units is U, UM. So in order to change your units, go for UM. So if you go for UM, you can see length is defined in millimeters, but I want it in meters. So you can change it. change the precision for example after point I need two decimal places if you want to change it again go for that rounding of decimal places two decimal places okay. fine but when you write for write your exam that is on the fifth day when you write your exam this uh, shortcut key won't be enabled if you enter you end nothing will come so you, so you must know that how to go manually and go into units packet in order to go manually Go to manage under manage project units. Okay, so project units is under manage. Fine. Okay. Next is to build a small model. Go to flow plans. Go to architecture and the architecture take architectural wall. So when you take this wall, it's important that you give your height of the wall. So here I am giving it as height from level 1 to level 2 so that the height of the wall will be from floor 1 to floor 2 that is 4 meters okay so after giving that I'll take a rectangle and just draw a small sketch here and then I want to draw a so this particular wall which I have created is of oh, generic 200 mm Okay, there are uh, three types of walls. One is generic wall, stack wall, and partition wall. So, generic wall in the sense which has common thickness with a common material. Uh, stack wall in the sense which has two different materials with two different thickness. And curtain wall in the sense like this partition walls. Fine. So now I'm going to take an interior wall. So I'll take a lesser dimension wall. Go to walls. I'll take a partition wall here. 100 mm and then take line and just draw a partition board. All things are ready from here. From here. From the center of the mark. So I have added my boards. Okay, in order to see this, this is a 2D. So now I want to see this in the 3D. View. So in order to go for a 3D view, see a palette here, click on it, go for 3D. So you can see your 3D view of your structure. But this is in the wireframe. You want to see it in the realistic mode. In order to do that, go for visual style and the visual style realistic. Okay? So after doing this, you can add materials to your wall. This is in the concrete, this is concrete material. You can add your own material to your wall. So next is adding materials, for example, for this particular wall, I want to add different materials, so go to edit type, duplicate it, ok, under structure you give edit, and here you see the thickness of the wall, so if you want to change the thickness of the wall, you can change it, ok. So next is material, add a material. I want to make this as a brick wall, so I take brick, you OK. OK. So this wall has been changed into a brick wall. Fine. The next one is editing your particular wall. For example, I have this wall, but I want to edit this particular wall. In order to edit that, go to edit profile. Select the particular wall and then go to edit profile. Select edit profile so you can see a pink lines. So that is the boundary of the wall. That's what I want to change. Go to front view. So now I want to change this uh, wall. So just select this uh, element. 
delete it and then I take an arc and draw an arc here. I want the wall to be like this. Okay. Now go to view. Ready. Can you see? The wall I have edited in the concave direction. Okay. So this is how you have to edit your walls. So now if you want to add a different material at the interior of the building or the interior of the wall and a different material at the exterior of the wall. Again, go to the wall, edit type, duplicate, okay, structure edit. So if you can see there is only one structure, but I need three different structures. One of them, there will be different material at the inner and different material at the exterior and the core material at the center. So I give insert twice and change this thickness. I'll do it as 0 0.4, sorry, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and this I'll do it as 0 0.15. Now, go to material, change the material. I'll give this material. For this, I'll change the different material. Here, okay, okay. So now, if you see, the interior is made up of a different material. And now, to go to the exterior, you can see it is made up of a different material. To rotate your building, you can either use this cube, make use of this cube, or press shift and then scroll key. And then you can just move around. Okay, shift and scroll. So, next is uh, adding sweep and reveal. Next topic is adding sweep and reveal. To add sweep and what is sweep and what is reveal? Yesterday I said about sweep and reveal. Reveal in the sense giving pointing or giving groove. Cutting the section is called review, where a sweep in the sense the projection which comes out of the wall. Okay, so to, we have default sections which we can create and you can design your own section as well. First, I'll tell the default section available a little bit and then how to make your own copy. So, if you need to add a sweep here in this particular wall, just go to architecture under wall, you have wall sweep. Okay, click on this and just place that. So I have placed it. So this is called my sweep. You can see my sweep has been added here. Okay. In order to change the material of the sweep, select that particular sweep, go to edit type, under profile, you have only one profile here. Under material, go to material and add a new material to it. You apply. So the material has been changed. Fine. So if you want to drag it, just click it and just drag it wherever you want. Okay. This is called sweep. Whereas reveal in the sense, this this is default available. If you want to change the size, you got to sketch it. You can't do it with this. So this I'll delete it and now I'll add a reveal. So in order to add a reveal, again go to wall, in the wall you have wall reveal. Select on it and place it. So I have placed it. You can see it is cutting a section here. It is called reveal. But now I don't want this. I, this is only of a square shape. But I want my own shape. In order to make your own shape, you should go to Application menu, under application menu, go to new, under new, family. Under family, we have English, under that, search for metric profile review. So, we have metric profile review. Click on it. And we have four quadrants. Now, you have to sketch your review. So, I will sketch my review. So I have created a 
small sunshade. Now, go for this load into project and close. Yes. Save. Now, go for 3D view. After going for 3D view, select first delete this. Now, select this particular wall. Go for edit type. Duplicate. OK. Structure edit. Under preview, go for sections and then sweep. Click on sweep and click on add. If you add, we have a default profile. Click on it, the uh, review which I created will appear here. It is family one. I saved it as family one. So click on family one, give the material and then give the distance. I'll give it as 2 meters. And then from base, I mean from base, 2 meters from the base. And at the exterior side, then you apply. Okay. So you can see my speed has been added. Okay. Similarly, you should do for review. Give OK. OK. Go on it. Give. Flip it. It will come out. So this is my sunshade. You have to drag it and wherever you place the window, you have to put it there. Now, if I want to create openings in this particular wall, how will you create? Just click on this, again go to edit profile, go to the front view, and I want an opening at this particular junction. So, go to uh, circle. Okay. Now, I have created an opening at this particular wall. Fine. Now I want to add glass to this particular junction, only this junction. In order to do that, again go to level 1. This area I want to add a curtain wall. Go for wall, under wall, go for curtain wall. Under curtain wall, just add the wall here. You will be having an error message. What is this error message? Your placing two walls at the same area. So it is overlapping. So in order to avoid that, go to edit type, go to and give automatically embedded. Right? Fine. So now that error message will go off. Now go for 3D. So my glass has been added. But I need to cover the top and the bottom portion with wall. So in order to do that, select on this particular wall, here you have base offset. Give the base offset as 1 meter. Okay, now go for top offset. Top offset how much will you give? Will you give it in the positive or negative? You should give it in the negative because it should come down. So give minus 1 meter. This opening portion is covered with my glass. Fine. So next we will see about uh, today's topic that is adding doors, adding windows, all those stuff. All those stuff. Glass. So in the I'm uh, going to create a glass in this particular wall. So I'll go for floor plans. This junction, I want a glass. Go for architecture on the architecture wall. Take a curtain wall. Draw the curtain wall. And then go for view, 3D view. My glass has been added here. Now select that particular glass. You have base of view 1 meter. And now the top offset I'll give minus one meter. And this apply. Okay. So now I'll visit this particular building. So 
now I'll tell you about how to add doors and windows. Now to add doors and windows. Just make a small sketch in your uh, architecture. Now if you see, my this wall is at the left and this wall is at the right. But I, I want to align this wall in such a way that this is a through wall. Okay, in order to do that, go for align. Align is under modify. Under modify, you have align. Okay, AL is the shortcut. Click on align, click the parent wall and then the next wall. Okay, click the parent wall and the next wall. So that it will be aligned in the same direction. Next one is next one is I want to add doors and windows. In order to add doors and windows, go to architecture. You have door. Select on this door. The shortcut key is DR. Select on door and place the door where you want. I want a door here. I need a door here. And here. So, this particular door is in such a way that it is opening inside, but I want to change it. I want to open the door from outside. So, just click on this arrow. Mark. Okay, you want to change the direction of the frame? Yes, you can change it. You can click this arrow mark and change it. Okay, if you want to change the swing that is door swing direction also, we can change it. Smart. Otherwise, it, to be very easy, use the space bar. We just click on space bar. So this is one type of door, but I need different types of doors. You see this in the 3D view. This is only one type of a door. All the doors are identical, but I need different types of doors. So in order to add that, go to level one. I just delete these two doors. Go to doors, under doors go for load family. Under load family, release, use metric, here. 
here you have a lot of rows. You just click on it, you have many doors here. Different types of doors. You can select any one door here. I'll go for residential. So I need this particular door. So I'll open this particular door. Select the size. I'll select this size. Give OK. And just place it. And go for view. 3D view. So now you can see this door is different and this door is different. So you can add whatever door you want. But if you think you need a different type of door that is not available in Revit, then you should go for Revit City or Revit Forum. That are there, those are two websites by where you can you know download your own doors. Okay. City.com or Revit Forum. These two websites you can go download what are the components you want. Okay. If you need more components, you can uh, download it from there. Next is adding windows. Similar to those, go for architecture. Under architecture, you have window. Similar to that, you have only one type of window here. But I need many type of windows. First, select this particular window and place it. If you want to change the size of the window, go for this type selector. And default is 406 into 610 mm. But I want to change my dimension in the sense you have a lot of dimensions here. You can select any one of them and place it. I'll place one door here. How much dimension is this number? Number R. Default reference. So, windows has been created here. But I need different type of window. If you go to view and 3D view, my window has been placed here. This one and the other one. But I need different types of windows. So in order to go for that, go for level 1. Under level 1, go for window. Under window, go for load family. Click on load family. Go for libraries, US metric. Search for windows. So double click on windows. You have so many windows here. So you can just select whatever window you want. And select this particular window. Click on it. You open. So now place that particular window. So my window has been placed. So what is uh, still the, the distance between? Bottom of the window to the Flow. Okay. So I want to change the sill height of this particular window. How will you change? Go to the right elevation and see here. So this is my window. And the sill height is, you can see the sill height here. It is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 meter, 0 0.3050. I want to change the height of the sill height. Click on here and change it. I need to be 0 0.5 apply automatically in fix update okay this is how you have to change the sill height what is head height head height ceiling head height of this particular window what is the head of this window distance between this and bottom of the floor is called head height So next is adding windows and doors and then adding tags. As you said in AutoCAD, we place the tag individually. Whereas in Revit, we can do it with a single click. And just place some more windows. Go for floor plans. Under floor plans, go for window. I'll take a different type of window and I'll place two more windows here. And then I'll go for tags. So tag will be under annotate. In order to add tags, you should go for annotate. If you go for annotate, here you have an option called tag or select on tag or and I want to add tags for doors or windows. I want to add the tags for windows. In order to add tags for windows, select on windows. Give apply.
now my tags have been created for Windows. If, if you want to change the name of the stack, click on it and it will change. Okay. If you see here, this is 19, whereas this is 60. Why? Because they are two different windows. That's why it has got two different windows. Similarly, if you want to create tags for your doors, go for tag all. Select on doors, apply. Okay. So this is how it will Okay. So any doubt on tags, windows, and placing the uh, doors? Any doubt on this? Okay. Next, I'll tell you about how to create flows. Okay. How to create different types of flows and use of asset flows. So in order to create flows, go to architecture. Under architecture, you have something called flow. Select on flow, go for architecture. So you can see a more image of the plan here. And then go for draw. Under draw, go for either walls or pick lines. You can make use, you can draw the, you can sketch the Floor using all these options, but easy option is these two options. So I'll go for pick walls and pick the wall. I'll pick the wall here. So it should be a closed loop. There must not be any opening and it should not intersect. These two conditions apply. Okay. So give OK. Go for view and preview. So you can see my close has been created. But now this is only the common flow, but I need different types of flows like tails, wood, all those things. In order to do that, click on this particular flow which I have created, go for edit type, duplicate the same, then go for structure. Under structure, you have something called material. Click on that material, and you will be, you know, have selected options from this, but there are numerous new materials which you can. In order to go for that, click on this create new materials and give it as and rename it as hall. You can name it whatever you want and I'll name it as hall. And then click on this asset browser. Here, open this appearance. You can see a lot of materials. I'm creating flow. So I must go for flowing. So where is flowing? Here it is. So select, select on flow. If you select on flow, I want wood or vinyl or tile or stone. I need stone. So double click on stone. So you have a lot of materials here. In this, you can select any one of the material. I will select marble and then apply. Okay. Okay. So my floor is created of marble now. Okay. So this is one flow. Now I need a different type of uh, flow for my bedroom, different type of flow for my hall. So in order to do that, again go for level 1. So consider this is my bedroom. Okay. Now I want to add different type of flow only for this particular things. In order to do that, go for flow, under flow, architectural flow, then go for edit type, don't sketch it. Go for edit type. Duplicate, okay, and then again structure edit, and the material go for edit. Here, create a new material. Give it as edit type, duplicate, okay, structure edit, material edit. Creating new material, rename, I'll give it as bedroom, then go for asset browser, appearance, flooring, I'll give it as bamboo, and then apply. Okay, okay, okay. Now give all. Now create your uh, particular floor using a rectangle for this particular building 
and then you put me go for your view 3D view and now select this particular flow and give an height option of 0.1 apply and you see you have different flow for the other other rooms there is for your bedroom you have a different view okay should I do it again? Fine. I'll do it for this particular room. Um, go for level 1. So I have created different flow for this and I'll create a different flow for this room again. Again go for architecture under flow, view architectural flow and then you edit type, duplicate, ok, structure edit material, I want to change the material and give new material I will rename it after renaming, go for asset browser appearance, flooring wood I will take beach wood apply ok ok now go for draw and take a rectangle and sketch the flow and give finish. Go for view 3D. Now the material has not been added. You can see it is merging with the previous flow. Why? Because both the flows are having common thickness, 150 mm. So I have to give some offset, offset so that it comes a little above the base flow. So select on this particular flow. Here you have height offset. Give it as 0 0.03. Apply. Now if you see in the top view, we have a different material for this particular. Fine. Any doubt on creation of flows? I am skirting one. Skirting one. Now I am skirting one. Is there any doubt on this? So next is editing your flows. I want to edit the boundary of the flow. For example, I am at uh, 3D view. Under 3D we select a particular flow. Now I need the flow till this area. I want to protrude or extrude the flow till the exterior of the building. So edit boundary. After selecting the particular flow, go for edit boundary and then select the particular area where you want to extrude or protrude and then just drag it. And keep it. So you can see flow has come outside the building. Fine. Clear. Just try to one more time. Select this particular. First, select this particular flow. Go for edit boundary. Select the pink line where you want to exclude, and then drag it. This is one way. Another way is. Go to top view or level 1. This is my flow. Select on it. I don't want it. Delete. Take line. Start it from here. End it here. I mean, start it from here. End it here. I'll take a curve. I'll take a curve. Start, end, radius, finish, view, 3D view. Okay, so this is how you have to create it in stage of close. So try this if you have any doubt.